In this video we're going to discuss heat capacity. So we can generally define that kind of qualitatively as the energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by one Kelvin. So in order to raise the temperature from say 293 to 294 Kelvin you would have to input this many kilojoules of energy. and That would be equivalent to the heat capacity of that substance at that temperature. So two kinds of heat capacities that we are interested in. We have CV, the constant volume heat capacity, which we have mentioned before. And that is a path function relating to state and path functions. It depends on how you get a process from state A to state B. And it is also an extensive property and then if you divide by the number of moles, you get the molar constant volume heat capacity, which is also a path function, but that would be an intensive property. So it does not scale with the number of moles because it is the energy required to raise one mole of a substance uh, by one Kelvin. Okay, so if we have a process which is constant volume, so if delta V equals zero between some initial and final conditions, then we didn't do any work. So the work is going to be zero. And therefore, the change in internal energy for that system, if it's a closed system, is going to be just heat, QV, as we have said before. So for the constant volume heat capacity, CV, which is a function of temperature, Maybe it requires more heat to go from 294 to 295 than it does to go from 270 to 271. So heat capacity depends on temperature. And we can define this mathematically as the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature at a constant volume. And if it's not changing too quickly, if the heat capacity isn't uh, too much, if there isn't too much variation with temperature, then that's approximately the change in internal energy during a process divided by the change in temperature. So that would be equal to the constant volume heat divided by the change in temperature. Okay, but alternatively, what if instead of having a constant volume process, we have as we've seen, a constant pressure process. So if we have delta P equals zero, then the work done during that process is going to equal P delta V, and the change in enthalpy, delta H, is going to be, as we've seen, the constant pressure heat, which is absorbed or released by the system. So instead of having CV, the constant volume heat capacity, for a process like this, we will have CP, the constant pressure heat capacity. So we can define the constant pressure heat capacity as the partial derivative of the enthalpy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. And again, if CP isn't changing too quickly during a process, or if it or if the temperature doesn't change so much that CP varies a lot, then this is approximately equal to the change in enthalpy divided by the change in temperature during a process. And that would be equal to the constant pressure heat divided by the temperature. Okay, so if we have an ideal gas for whatever situation we're talking about, then we're going to have We've seen that enthalpy is defined as U plus PV. And we know for an ideal gas that PV equals NRT. So it also equals U plus NRT for some ideal gas. So we know that for an ideal gas, the internal energy is also just a function of temperature. So U depends only on the number of particles and the temperature. So it's basically directly proportional to the temperature for an ideal gas. So for our infinitesimal change in energy, du, 
that's going to be the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature at constant number of particles dt or you can also find that to be equivalent to cv dt okay so we have that what about if we look at the constant pressure processes if we have the change in enthalpy with the change in temperature that's ddt of as we saw up here u plus nrt so that's going to be du dt plus derivative with respect to temperature of nrt is just nr so we've already defined this term as being approximately equal to the constant volume heat capacity and we know that this term is the constant pressure heat capacity so replacing those two terms there we have CP this term equals du dt which is CV plus NR so there's a nice relationship between those two that the difference between them is just the number of moles times the gas constant but then our final little trick we're going to play here if we divide by n we go from the heat capacity to the molar heat capacity the c bar so I'm going to have that cp bar minus cv bar so we just subtract both sides by cv then divide both sides by r is going to be r okay and then we'll remind ourselves that CV bar, the molar constant volume heat capacity for an ideal gas is 3 halves R. If you have a monatomic gas, it is 5 halves R. If you have a diatomic ideal gas, and it is 6 halves or 3 R for a nonlinear polyatomic. So if we know the constant volume heat capacity, then we know the constant pressure heat capacity. We just need to add R. So our constant pressure heat capacities for monatomic gas will be 5 halves R. For diatomic gas will be 7 halves R. And for a nonlinear polyatomic will be 4 R. So although these may be different processes, they may be path functions, uh, they may have different derivatives which define them, the difference between this constant pressure heat capacity and the constant volume heat capacity is just NR, and for their molar cases, it's just our gas constant R.